Hey, what's up? I'm a diagnosed narcissist, but before I proceed with whatever I'm about to say, keep in mind that I am not a licensed professional. So with all that being said, I discovered something that I thought was particularly interesting because, you know, as a narcissist and a lot throughout this channel, I've discussed a lot about my identity issues and lack of self and all that kind of stuff. So it got me thinking once again about consciousness, which is I guess something that a lot of people typically do think about, but the notion in which people talk about consciousness is what exactly it's made of and what exactly makes up the self, quote unquote. And I've never really been able to participate in this conversation really well because, you know, kind of like what I said, I don't really feel like I have personhood. I don't really feel like I am anything it's just completely blank and you know hollow inside in actuality so when i discovered this it was particularly interesting to me and with the little that i've read about it i guess i kind of did want to talk about how i can see why this is a thing and i can see why this you know makes sense in being like put out there to be considered at the very least even though maybe you might say it's just my bias to have an inclination towards it because i have you know, a cluster B disorder, but you know, eliminative materialism, that's quite a mouthful. A lot of you most likely don't even know much about it. I mean, to be fair, I discovered it like a few days ago, but I guess this is something that I've always lived throughout like my entire life, if I can even say that. And if it goes along to being, you know, true, I guess, or let's say, you know, provable because I find that the interesting about this is that it does try to combine not just philosophy but even science together or more so specifically neuroscience and more so specifically when it comes to the self you know psychology because you know there's a lot of overlap between psychology and like neuroscience it has to do with like you know the brain and I guess like people's behavior and whatnot and I guess the more I think about it yes there is no such thing as free will I guess I should just be honest in saying that, like, yes, I am a determinism. I don't, I, I am a determinist. I mean, I'm not exactly convinced that there is such a thing as, like, free will or that people truly have, like, any sense of, like, agency. We're just born here randomly and, we're, you know, we're just gonna, we're just gonna die and everything's pretty meaningless. Well, you've heard me talk about, like, my nihilism all throughout my channel, but I think at a point this is actually getting somewhere besides... You might just say, oh, me trying to be like edgy or whatever, because at least like if we're going off on, on a scientific basis, I think a lot of neuroscientists are getting to that point and believing that, OK, we might actually prove that there is no such thing as like free will, quote unquote. I think I, actually there is research, I, I believe. I wouldn't be able to say it at like the top of my head, but I mean, I'm sure you can find it. But essentially the more we try to learn and understand about the brain like what part of the brain lights up when this certain behavior happens or like these you know certain thought patterns that you know exist in the real natural you know world you learn that we're technically no different than a computer because a computer can only you know do the things that like it's programmed to do you could argue from a neuroscientific basis that there is no free will because only you can do what you are programmed and conditioned by, you know, your brain to do. Now, the thing that eliminative materialism does criticize is this idea of folk psychology and the little that I read about it. Yeah, OK, it makes sense. All the things that people believe are just things that are borrowed within society. And I guess I would even argue myself that society, well, obviously, is technically not even like a real thing. That's why you hear people say all the time, blah, 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 that's just a social construct, da, 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 da. But, you know, let's say nationality, our, you know, politics, whatever, this or that, like all these like little groups and cliques and organizations that like, you know, we have invented throughout society. Yes, that's exactly what they are. They're literally just inventions because you're not going to tell me that like in the current year, it was the same as it was in, I don't know, let's say like 1934 or something. Obviously throughout like throughout the year, society has gone evolved or devolved, depending on who you ask in terms of like changes and whatnot in, you know, certain areas or like whatever. 
So this idea of like how to be in a society, how to act in a society, it's all just molded and it's not actually real. No different than what you do or do not program into, you know, a computer. But the only thing that's been, you know, consistent throughout the years is that everybody believes that it's for the good of society. Like more common attitudes now, for example, is that like, oh, discrimination is not okay. But you could have just as easily imagined back then that like, oh my gosh, you're being with a person that's not the same as you. Like, let's say when people are coming after, you know, like interracial marriages and whatnot, they, they could have just as easily as well also said, oh, you're ruining society. And that's why I mentioned earlier before that, like, okay, it either evolved or, you know, de-evolved depending on like, you know, who you ask. So essentially, none of this stuff is actually, you know, quote unquote real. And the fact that, and I would argue the fact that there are cluster B individuals such as myself in order to be an existing being, you technically don't even need a lot of these things that most people would hold dear to themselves, like where they come from, um, you know, all the things that they were like socialized to be or like expected to be. A lot of these things make up a lot of a lot of people's, you know, identity. So I guess you could even associate it with, you know, the idea of consciousness, but if everything is just for the tribe in that aspect, then who's to say you wouldn't have said the same thing for completely opposite beliefs that may have been more normally and commonly accepted, you know, back then. So in a way, you are not really you. You are just molded to be who you're expected to be. And because of that, because that's all you've been, you know, accepted in learning, you may think that's you, but it's actually not. Because you yourself, you know, are not, you know, isn't somebody that, you know, actually exists. Because the whole thing about limited materialism is that, like, essentially there is no such thing as consciousness. There is technically no such thing as, I suppose you could say, like, mental states, beliefs, and desires. Which I understand might sound absolutely absurd and, you know, ludicrous to a lot of people. But even when I think about it. Yeah, and it comes back to, I guess, more of, like, a determinist sort of, you know, like, aspect. Even the idea of self-reflection and thinking would not be a real thing. Because you can say the same thing about language. And I guess, as an interesting thought experiment, quote-unquote, what would your thoughts be without the notion of verbal language? Because verbal language is the only thing that allows, I would argue, that allows, you know, I guess sort of like abstract concepts to like even exist. Like as far as we know, we don't think dogs are discussing, you know, the meaning of life, whether there is any meaning to anything or, you know, whatever consciousness is to the, you know, deep degree that people want to think it is, which actually brings me to another point that I have. And perhaps this is why a lot of people, I would argue, mistakenly believe in, you know, religion or something beyond the material realm of, you know, understanding of the world because what a lot of people you know used to do back then and in in a way still to this day a lot of people would still do that but i guess it's like you know not as popular in a way because scientific explanations have come to you know like actually explain how i guess let's say things work to a better more you know understandable like logical degree of you know like understanding so what people did back then, they would often attribute mental states to things that they didn't understand. And I think this is why people created the notion of God to begin with is because when, I don't know, let, let's say there would be like natural disasters and whatnot, people would say, oh, God's angry, God's like mad or like something like that. But in actuality, oh, the reason why earthquakes, the reason why you know, hurricanes, typhoons, whatever, like, like they all have these naturalistic explanations that we now know that people didn't. So they just projected this idea of, you know, God towards it because people arguably have done the same thing to like our own consciousness and what a lot of like eliminative materialism, materialists, let's just say, will, you know, say is that neuroscience will now at some point actually explain why it is that we do come from you know the things that we do 
the only reason that people hold consciousness and the idea of I or, you know, who you are to such like a high degree is because of how ambiguous that it is. And I think that's why there's so many interpretations of consciousness, because people, you know, are just making like stuff up. And I know a lot of people say that you can't actually find qualia, subjective experience in, you know, in anybody. But I guess they're more so talking about that in like a metaphysical sense, which I don't really buy. I've been thinking about metaphysics a lot, to be honest. And maybe at this point, I'm not actually somebody that believes in like meta metaphysics. For example, time isn't real. I don't believe that um, time actually exists or even like numbers, the whether numbers actually exist, because I've think yeah, I've reached the point where I would say, yes, I am a mathematical fictionalist. And numbers are just, you know, like a convenient organization, but they don't actually exist. There's no such thing as a number. I can try to make like a separate video on that, but I'm just, I'm more so right now just trying to focus on, you know, this idea of consciousness. So like the fact that, for example, people would say, oh, the reason why this natural disaster is happening is because, oh, we've irritated God. We've irritated like a higher sort of power. They're projecting an idea of consciousness onto something that isn't actually there. So in so doing, they assume that their own consciousness must also be really special and therefore it must connect, you know, to the idea of, let's say, like, a soul. That's why there's, like, a god and, you know, we have, like, a special connection to, like, something, like, outside of there. But I think it's just compensation. And you might say, for example, because I know a lot of people say that, like, okay, you can't find oh, if you look at like two brains, you're not going to know which one likes chocolate ice cream and which one likes vanilla ice cream, quote unquote, and which, yeah, I get it. But I think natural explanations still make sense though. So you can enjoy a certain flavor of ice cream. Like maybe like looking at somebody's brain can't specifically say, oh, they like chocolate ice cream or they like vanilla ice cream, but we know what the reaction will be because when you do, when you, I guess, partake in something pleasurable or do something pleasurable, I don't know, like, whatever it is enjoyable that like you can think of the, th the, what everybody has in common, I would imagine is that like all the things in the brain are, you know, going to like light up like, Oh, when I eat chocolate ice cream or anything else that's enjoyable, let's say, you know, parts of my brain will like do this thing. So that's why you can say that technically it is not your will. It is not your like true consciousness to decide what you do or don't even like, your brain just fires up no different than a computer with all its like code and all this kind of stuff. So you could say that like, you know, there is no real you, like, even if you want to talk about like subjective experiences, like those are not special because you can like chocolate ice cream. Somebody else can like chocolate ice cream, but you know what you both have in common is, you know, the dopamine, the serotonin, like I'm, I'm not a fucking like, like neuro whatever. So I'm just like, but, but you, you know what I'm trying to say more or less. I imagine so it's not actually there and there is no like you or I and I right, check out check out my video called I think like language destroyed everything because kind of like what I already mentioned a little bit about it like earlier it's like okay if you're socialized to speak a certain language you can only express yourself even within the limitations of this language and I actually had a conversation with somebody on discord about it and that's why people argue over what is semantics, what isn't semantics, linguistics, connotations, whatever, all this kind of stuff. Because even within our own, you know, like poor definition of things, arguably that's all it will be. That's why even when you get a lot of languages, for example, there are certain words that do not have a direct translation in another language, because I guess you could just say there was no use for that, like, concept. But overall, that's all that it is, you know, some sort of of concept so in a way none of this is real and nobody actually exists just uh some things to think about <clears throat>